Oh, welcome back my gardening friends uh, to my June monthly harvest and we're just checking on everything and the grapes are just started to form these are a green grape they're very tightly bunched they seem to do quite well here a little bit crowded in the greenhouse this is my pomegranate plant bush whatever you'd like to call it. The flowers on this are absolutely beautiful. I had one flower last year, but it didn't set, so no fruit. Decisions time. It does need a good pruning, maybe from the bottom. And the frost damage is now uh, not to be seen. All the new shoots are growing nicely. The strawberries, did dry out in this uh, weather. The uh, birds are having uh, more than uh, me, but uh, we don't mind. We don't mind sharing a few. Now the birds will see that. So I'm going to have that. Excuse me. If it's good enough for the birds, it's good enough for me. So a little harvest of the strawberries. So I've beat uh, the birds to it and a little hashtag shed wars. Try and leave the stalks on your strawberries if you want to keep them. Uh, if the centres pull out, then uh, they won't last as long. They don't last long in our house anyway. Way back when I first started this allotment, hashtag starting a new allotment series one right through to series four in my playlist well worth a watch if you're new to gardening and i put these here to hold all the leaves up because the leaves do flop down and hopefully when google updates we'll see this from space and so we've had a harvest uh, all the rhubarb leaves will go into my uh, bin I collect the leaves and collect the juices for my rhubarb leaf tea insecticide it's a nice little harvest of uh, rhubarb there now hashtag Star Wars Star Wars shed wars could be Star Wars in the end this is how the rhubarb should look when you pull it you actually pull and it takes it all out if you pull it and it ends up like that the rest of the rhubarb that's in the crown will go rotten and it may go down into the crown so whether you like your yours long or a good girth on it or you like it with a bend in it rhubarb is a, an excellent fruit I think to grow keeping an eye on all the fruit trees trying to keep under control all the aphids and things that attack us we need to get these pruned very shortly before the allotment um, inspections go ahead need to keep them six foot high one of the rules on this site we're keeping an eye on our autumn raspberries making sure they're all contained and we need to take control of these runners just pull them you see the root pulling up there don't worry just keep pulling at them they will die eventually Oh, they ain't coming, guys. Um, but yes, keep pulling them out. Don't try and get the roots out because the roots are feeding the main mother plants. This is the autumn gold raspberry and we've had a runner run underneath and come up there. That's staying. I'm going to be taking that out because I do like the autumn gold yellow raspberries. It may even stay there. We'll see. The uh, blackberries are forming and we just need to control all these. The winds have been unseasonal winds we're having and uh, we've got a lot of branches blowing about. We just got to keep tying those in. Everything that's in the fruit cage needs protecting from the birds. Any repairs to stop them getting in. Sometimes they'll dive bomb this and get through but this netting's quite good. I've been watering the blueberries because they have dried out during this spell and everything else we're looking uh, keeping an eye on the aphids and uh, the ladybirds and ladybugs and the babies in a previous video i've shown you that 
Uh, we're keeping an eye on the uh, beet leaf miner, pulling the leaves off the edible leaves. So we've got a few there, so I haven't picked those. So another bag full of uh, lettuce leaves, and realistically, you won't even know where I've taken them from. Successional sowing there. Hashtag tomato in a bottle challenge from Haughty Hugh. Tomatoes, lots of flowers. Some of them now are forming the uh, fruits. Uh, second bed, doing well. Second light, second sowing of uh, icicle radishes. We pull them out the ground. We have a bucket. We wash them off, get as much soil as we can off them. And then this water can be used in there. So the soil compost can go in the bottom of those buckets. So when they're finished, they'll come out and be reused. My movable seat, found this absolutely perfect. There's a video on that. It puts it next to the glass so we can end up breaking that. But I'll move that seat about so I'll get a decent purchase and harvestability. Uh, these are the sparkler radish. I took a few of those. And these are the Diane. Just trying a few different radishes, seeing how they grow. Pea shoots doing well. Took the tops out, got new growth. Little harvest there. Some of the onions are going to seed. Don't worry about it. Just take the tops off. I'll leave the tops at the bottom so I know which ones uh, I need to take first. And these two are the ones that were growing together and uh, they will, won't store good, but uh, they make for good eating now. And some of these haven't gone to seed and they'll store okay. I interplanted with uh, my cabbages. Uh, there's the dwarf kale. It's got some aphids on it, unfortunate. I will spray it with a rhubarb leaf tea insecticide and uh, another one with neem oil. But that's the harvest from the, the beetroot. They have got a little bit bigger than I'd uh, like them. Also, I wasn't, didn't really want to cut them. I wanted them more that size so that uh, you could just put them in the pickling jar hole. And before I go, I don't want to cut that off yet because I've still got a few jobs to do before I leave. So that will go, come with me. And the next sowing of uh, beetroot are all in here. Some of them are struggling with the leaf miner. Very difficult to spray with neem, neem oil. But uh, other than that, the neem oil seems to be keeping the uh, cabbage white butterflies away. If they're about at the moment, they're certainly not going to fly in this wind. Some of the peas have now got their flowers on. We showed these in a previous video towards the end. So if anybody uh, disappeared before the end, they're absolutely beautiful. The bees would love those and hopefully the uh, Marge 2 will appear and we can start harvesting those as soon as they're ready. But they're surprising, you have to keep an eye on them, they form very quickly. Uh, to protect my square foot gardening beds and my raised beds, they're all on platforms, they're all under big uh, stones, blocks. Uh, screws are in the upright poles to keep them off. And uh, hashtag Shed Wars, another little tip suggested by my, one of my viewers. This is how we learn. This Shed Wars will be absolutely brilliant for people to share their knowledge and experience. Uh, just some sacrificial pallet board. Uh, I was using washers to, to get the gap, so ventilation. So when the wood chips are stacked up against there and get wet, they'll rot this. They won't rot these expensive boards. Expensive because I had to pay for them. So Babette in the garden said, why not use bottle tops? These are milk bottle tops. So they're spacers. Pilot hole, screw, the screw goes straight through that into there and acts as an excellent spacer. So in five or six years time, I'll replace these and not these. Hashtag Shed Wars. Good old team over the pond. 
please support Team Over the Pond. You can see how I built the seat uh, in a previous video if you want to scroll back. Even now the broad beans are being attacked by black fly. Uh, I did trial some beet uh, rhubarb leaf tea insecticide and that's held it back. I think it's the stink that does it more than anything else. I wondered why the wife uh, hasn't stood next to me uh, for a while. Good job we've got a massive bed. Um, but yeah, broad beans, we've got a nice little harvest there. Chard as always goes completely mad. Wind scorch at the top there. Uh, keeps getting bashed about, never mind. Uh, the last lettuce out of this bed, there's the collar that I use so that uh, it just a little prevent the slugs, uh, etc. So there's the harvest of the uh, broad beans. Uh, you can just see some signs of black fly. Uh, this lettuce has been in there a while, but I've just cut it off at the bottom and they're reasonably clean uh, and uh, slug free. Uh, sorry for repeating myself for my regular viewers but we've had one cucumber damp off. It hasn't had the circle on, it hasn't had the, well it has had the um, uh, ridge so the, the water can get around the, uh, around the bottom and not the top. I've been watering from there all this heat I think um, it just dried out. Um, it could have been a bit of stem rot, but that's the that's the issues you have if you get any water on the stems. But I don't think I did. It looked like it had actually died through heat. And we've had a warm one here in the UK. Clear blue skies from day to night, and records have been broken again. Just keep taking the side shoots out and uh, some people just plant them in there and they will grow if you want more tomatoes but I've got more than I need so basically we don't know what tomatoes these varieties other than those few there so that's number one two three and four either that way or that way and we'll see what uh, what tomatoes we'll probably be able to recognize the varieties once they start growing grapes galore in the uh, polytunnel. I've got to make a decision whether I'm going to keep these Boscoop glories or not. They're big seed, very productive. Do I want to keep them when uh, we do the polytunnel? I've got to cut it right back. But is there a grape variety that you would uh, recommend a black grape? Please leave it in the comments. Cut and grow uh, cut and come again lettuce etc that's a tray that I'd actually I take plants pot them up but we've got that much lettuce I'm not going to sow so many seeds now for the uh, successional sowing um, we tr I'll try and get them into these pots and then pot them on here we have uh, some of the pak choy uh, more beetroot ready to go in to replace and some celery there and uh, we're going to do uh, we're going to plant these tomatoes shortly they're very leggy, so I want to reduce the size. So let's have a little experiment. So we've got these two very leggy tomatoes. Uh, both, it looks like uh, we've got um, a tomato form in there, it's like a plum. Uh, I'm not sure what variety that might be. Alan might know, maybe one of his. So we've got, the, the stem's not gonna, gonna last. So I'm gonna do two different methods here. It's pot's not deep enough so uh, we're just going to do a little bit of uh... right so this one I'm going to pot with the stem flat maybe should have took some of these leaves off first as we know we have to look after our stems. So horizontal this one and uh, let's sort this out first. It survive. So again.
we'll do this one vertical so one vertical one horizontal they're in tubs with water so they'll draw from the bottom air pots let's see how they get on so we've got the lettuce the radishes, I haven't harvested any French breakfast, don't need them, broad beans there. We've got the rhubarb, strawberries, big bag of lettuce. Don't tie the knot too tight because I can reuse the bag. And then we've got the beetroot. I think that's the Sabutio F1. And we've got a couple of onions. Now I'm going to go home now, hopefully the camera will carry on because we've got a rocket potato reveal to do. So just in case it fails, happy gardening to you all. Till next time my friends. To ra for now. And please don't forget to hit the like button, consider subscribing and leave those comments. Hopefully see you back at home. Okay, so we've made it home. A few things left in here. Um, this is the kale, new kale I'm trying. Uh, different to what I'm normally growing. Uh, there is uh, the melon, some of the cucumbers, I think that's the carmen, and tomatoes. Here's some more of the trailing tomatoes, telepathy, and uh, the uh, bloody butcher that uh, Phil sent me. And we've got some of the uh, New Zealand uh, spinach that a, a viewer recommended I use, and the next sowing of uh, the white Lisbon. See, it can be done, I just need to, you need to persist. And another sowing of the bull's blood. And this is where my uh, next grow light review will be, the SP600. Um, we've done the TS150. Maybe getting the uh, uh, letters wrong, but pop down in the description below. They're always there. Have a look before I do my uh, review on the next lot of the 600. And these potatoes have been sown at different times throughout the winter, starting on 1st of December. So we now need to empty the rest of these out. But they've been in this grow room, taking the plastic down. And I think the lights will be set up here. They cover three foot. So we'll see what happens uh, this coming season. So these are rocket. They were planted, sown on the 2nd of February and this is uh, what we've got not many but a nice harvest and there you can see the seed potato that's used all its energy up to keep those uh, potatoes going and those there will be just more than one meal for us so it is well worth it next one two weeks later we sowed this one 14th of february again yeah, we've got some nice potatoes there's the seed it's a little bit squishy it's still got some life in it so we'll move on to the next one now, as you can see this one's been crossed out it's been replanted a new potato put in so first of all it was the first this is the first one the first of december this is the 27th maybe of february and i'm absolutely sure i put that seed potato from the first of the 12th in here so let's see if it made any difference well, a little bit. Uh, I'm presuming this is the rocket seed that we planted uh, on the 27th of uh, February. And that's the seed from, oh, that does smell a bit now it's opened up, uh, on the 1st of December. Now, you might say, is it worth it? The seeds are safe seed. The compost, yes, I did buy. So those buckets, we're looking at four quid. Four pound for compost, new 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 compost, which will be reused. That barrel will be reused. Um, so that compost has lasted me all the potatoes that I've done in the these experiments. The heat was for free. We kept them frost free because it was the greenhouse grow room. So let's put them all together and see what we've got out of the three containers. So that's what we've got from three seed potatoes, my own seed and some uh, shop bought compost like i said i've done loads and loads i've used 12 rocket seeds the rest are on my vertical gardening so you can see that uh, some of it's my homemade compost but for ease 
weed free over the winter we use fresh compost no added nutrients nothing added to the compost only what it comes in and uh, we've got some nice clean potatoes that will last us two or three weeks before we need to harvest those off the vertical gardening by that time the potatoes uh, will be ready uh, in the permanent bed so we've had fresh potatoes not stored fresh potatoes 12 months of the year so a big success uh, cucumbers are just started to form now uh, on these so it won't be long before we've got fresh cucumbers tomatoes excellent these are bush tomatoes so we don't take the side shoots out uh, thanks very much guys happy gardening to you all please uh, consider subscribing hit the like or dislike button it's all interaction YouTube loves it so if you hit the dislike then let me know about it we don't mind these uh, shoots they just wrap themselves around self-supporting we shouldn't have to do anything with those till next time guys for now.